Uh, John Chow, what's up, John? Thank you for making Gotham great again. Love you, G, from New York City. Bernie half attacked, half the debate, perfect. The rest canceled it out, though. It's over, no good choice in November, Ron Paul 20. I don't know about that. There we go. I, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, w- I don't think like it's over. I mean, because we the Tuesday, we're going to see what happens Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, right now it's like to quote the great uh, late poet Tom Petty: "The waiting is the hardest part." I, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like I, I felt like there were some good moments in tonight's debate. I felt like there were some very disappointing moments too. And um, right now, we just have to wait and see where the cards land. But I mean, I, I think I think if- we know. I mean, I just think we know. I mean, I just think they've rigged it. They, you know, they're robbing us. They're sitting there saying they're going to get rid of the primary now. I mean, I just don't know how Bernie could go along with this. And I don't know how the rest of us can either. So what do we do, Kim? Let me ask you this question now, since it's like we've seen there's been a lot of evidence of exit poll numbers, double digit swings between exit poll numbers of showing Bernie huge double digit leads in exit polls and then Biden winning these precincts. We've seen this, like there's a bunch of states that were supposed to be Bernie's that somehow weren't. And there's states that don't have paper ballots and they have touchscreen and all this other stuff, or they had polls closed or there's seven hour waits and everything hasn't been counted. There's been all these just more, in some ways more obvious shenanigans than 2016. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Like if Tuesday hap like what do what do what do we what do we as progressives do? Because it's it's again, it's not just about Bernie. We've talked about this. It's not I'm not voting, I'm not just like a Bernie diehard. I'm a progressive. It's these policies. And I've seen no other politician other than Tulsi actually have any of these platforms. Joe Biden, his whole career, he's been a Republican. Like it's mystifying to me that the any blue will do crowd just they're so in love with the eight Obama years, they refuse to acknowledge it. I argue with them online, and they make they mock me for, oh, you didn't pay your mortgage, that's why. And I'm like, you sound like a Republican. I literally said the banks, I spelled out how the banks stole my home. Like, th- and you sound like, I what, I should have pulled myself up on my, my bootstraps? Is this, like, had the stimulus money worked the way it was supposed to? Would I be a welfare mom? I mean, literally, these are, these are college-educated neoliberals are the worst people. They're worst, they're worse than the red state Trumpers. I have a little bit of compassion for the red state Trumpers because many of them, small town, didn't have a great education, whatever. Like, they, they, uh, they lived in a very uh, closed community. And... But the college-educated neoliberal is is unbelievable. They all they, and when you out left them, they fucking lose their minds. So what do we do yeah, here? Because they should know better, right? Yeah, they, they're, they're the ones who should know better. I mean, the people in like kind of the small town, um, you know. And I'm from Boise, Idaho, mm-hmm. and you know, they're all uh, you know a lot of Trump supporters there, and um, and a lot of that is just not you know people in have a tendency to like things the way they've always been Mm -hmm. and they just don't think things really change and they haven't quite caught up to the realities but yeah you know like the latte sipping liberal is supposed to know better because they claim to and then they don't right so what do we do though so so if i mean maybe bernie wins a bunch of states on tuesday and it's still a live competition and who knows or i i don't know i don't know Maybe everybody watched tonight, scared of coronavirus. There's going to be some announcement tomorrow. Everything gets shut down and people are going to just say, fuck this. I'm voting for Bernie. We need Medicare for all. I don't know. I want that to happen. I really want that to happen. But like this woman, Jackie Salas, wrote a like the speech Bernie should give. And I read it on my live stream and posted the video. Nomiki Khan's dropped that video saying, Bernie, this is what you need to do. Everyone in the last couple of days, especially since the corona, you know, ramping up, everyone's like, Bernie, fight, fight, do it, say it, fight it. I was watching my Twitter feed. People were like, fight harder, do more. And when he would land them, people would get excited. But what do we do, Kim? Let me start with you first and then Ron. What do you what do what do we do? What do you think? Uh I mean, I think that at this point we we wait and watch the Democratic Party rob us again blatantly this time using the coronavirus as the reason. They'll say, oh, we can't, you know, and Biden clearly has the lead. We're just going to go ahead and count just the absentee ballots. And if you haven't cast an absentee ballot, then there's always November. That's when you can really get out there and defeat Donald Trump. Right. Um, So I think we, you know, do that. And then I think that uh, after that, we have to be done. We have to be done with the Democratic Party. I, I, I mean, I'm, 
I'm done completely. And I mean, you know, I'll give them a little tiny slice of a chance here because you never know. People might be at home feeling the coronavirus, feel, you know, feeling the, um, the, the panic and feeling like, no, now is the time for somebody like Bernie Sanders. And so they might not be uh, easily gaslit by CNN this time around, you know, or MSNBC or whatever. I don't even know what they're saying. But other than that, I think after this, we have to go to a third party. I, and, and I think the only way to do a third party is to wait, unfortunately, until 2024 when, you know, if Trump loses, I mean, um, if Trump's in office again and then in 2024 when the Republican Party tries to take, you know, when the Republican establishment tries to take their party back, that is when a lot of populists on the right will also start rising up and saying, this is crap. You know, we're, we want the establishment to go. I, you know, we just need the yellow vest movement to come to America. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. this is just, it's, I, I don't understand how people don't understand that we're becoming a banana Republic. This is the end guys. This is the end. Like this is it. Mm -hmm. And it's exit stage left for us as a country. If we continue down this path and if we do, that is more dangerous than Donald Trump. That is more dangerous than Donald Trump. And people aren't getting that. They aren't understanding. That's not yeah. four years of a buffoon who's tweeting something you don't like. That is 40 years of corruption. That is an entire generation of corruption that we would hopefully maybe be able to get back after 40 years of the country just going to complete shit. Yeah, and we're facing climate collapse. We're facing a... Um we were facing, uh, you know, and this pandemic is 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 exacerbated in some ways because of climate change. Um, I mean, the Syrian war has was exacerbated uh, because of uh, climate change. I mean, like all of this stuff. So I don't know, like it, it, it's it's. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's like, and the thing is too, like it's hard to do yellow vest protests when they're when everyone's quarantined and you can't have big groups gather. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like all the Hong Kong protests and all that stuff's done. That that ended because everyone's inside, mm -hmm. scared of this virus. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what this is going to look like. You know, it's really we've never. Um, we've never seen anything like this. I've never seen every sports league shut down. We've never seen, and they might just end the primary and just the Democrats say, Oh, we got to go Biden and everyone will go along with it. And then Biden will either lose to Trump or Biden will lose or if he, and if, I think he'll win. Yeah. But I even if he Biden does win, lose. it's like, I think he wins. Why do you think that Kim? Why do I think that? Oh, you put me on the spot. Now I have to tell everybody about my hocus pocus. <laughs> you got some tea leaves or uh, something, Kim? That, uh, is... Yeah, it's my tea leaf reading. I, well, almost. But yeah, I mean, I, I um, you know, I dabble in my little astrology and I looked into, into these stars and I saw that Biden wins. And it's, it's kind of, you know, I know that sounds nutty, but it hasn't. My yeah. prediction <laughs> system has not has not proven me, has not shown to be wrong yet. I decided I'm going to make a video of this at some point. Like I will do a video of me showing this prediction system because it is kind of wacky. And I understand like me, seemingly a logical person <laughs> buying into this stuff, but I'm telling you it's real. And I've told myself I'm going to make a video of the prediction and I'm not going to release it until he wins. And I'll say, OK, I'm going to now I'm going to have to tell you guys all my crazy secrets. Everybody will know way too much about me. But yeah, I'm telling I you, I want to know it hasn't been wrong. I predicted Donald Trump winning. I predicted deaths with this thing. Seriously, everybody in my life who is skeptical about it is no longer a skeptic of it, even the harshest of skeptics. And I'm pretty sure from what I've seen, he pulls it off. I don't know how he does it. I am in disbelief, too, because I think no way. But it hasn't been wrong yet in the years and years and years that I've used it. And I think um, it's like a and it's, a, it's like a Middle Eastern astrology. Well, that nobody knows about. <laughs> I, I know it's I, super I, creepy. I know. I totally understand how that sounds. You know, <laughs> you Everybody's really got like... their thing, guys. Everybody's got their vice. <laughs> okay. This is mine. All okay? right. Some people drink. Some people do drugs. Some people shop. I do astrology. Okay. Well, astrology aside, <laughs> the only way that I can see Biden winning is if the deep state or the ruling class or whatever you want to call it goes, actually, Biden will be better for business. So we'll let him win. Because Trump... I think, honestly, it's that we cannot underestimate the amount of hatred there was for Hillary Clinton. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's the people do not like the Clintons. And then all this stuff from Epstein coming out the last like seven months, eight months, there's just more confirming. Everyone's like, told you. Even like Clinton supporters are like, really? They were both on his plane and went to his compound? Yeah, a bunch of times, but you're okay with that because um, I'm with her. Um, what's that? Oh, we had a thing. Um, now I'm back. Yeah, we, so we've all talked about this. So, so um but even if Biden wins, it'll just be four years of neoliberal centrism. The left will go to sleep and say, yay, we beat Trump. And it'll be the worst thing ever yeah. because that's exactly what would happen. Well, and then in everybody would years. give up. They would say, this is it. This is how we win from now on. Yeah. And then nothing and no real. He, he won't do any real change with climate like Bernie's. If we don't address climate change like now, today, we're already behind. We're already late. It's over. Like, and if we just, Biden will raise gas mileage standards and get us into the Paris Accord and stop fracking, kind of. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was amazing. He just gave a plan that we should have started in the 90s. Yeah. And, he, and, and I mean, to Bernie's credit, he was just like, that's not enough, Joe. That's not enough. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not, it, it, it really is, it's not enough. So I, I hope that that resonated with enough people. I hope enough people are seeing... Well, that's what we're hoping for. I mean, you know, like, as far as what you originally asked, like, what can we do? I mean, it's not... They're already trying to cheat Bernie. We know this. This is already happening. Our only hope is that we're going to be so loud and so big that they can't ignore us. And thus far, it, it hasn't been going great. It's not over yet, mm -mm. but it hasn't been going great. So, you know, I'm hopeful that that tide shifts, that people saw this tonight, people who were undecided and kind of thought, gee, one guy sounds like someone who might be able to lead us out of this thing. The other guy sounds like, ooh, he sounds like he needs a nap. Uh, I'm going to go for Bernie. <laughs> you know, that that's what I'm hoping for. Um, you know, I, I don't think Biden... Now, Kim, I'm really looking forward to seeing your video. Like, like I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. It, it does seem, like, very interesting. Uh, I'm not knocking it at all, nor can I prove or disprove it. But my thought right now is that Biden cannot beat Trump because I think to beat Trump, you need to have two things. You need to have uh, some undecided voters go your way. And you need to have some unlikely voters, people who aren't going to get off the couch otherwise. Biden gets neither of those two things. Right. Neither. So he ain't going to he ain't going to beat Trump. I, I just don't see it happening. Um, so what can we do? It's yellow vest time. It's been yellow vest time. You know, I mean, I've said this on your mm -hmm. show, my show, Jimmy's show, any other show I've been on. If Bernie's our next president, I get to celebrate for two nights. Then I put on a yellow vest. If anything else happens, I just put on the yellow vest immediately. There's no, you know, don't get a celebration for two nights. I mean, it's time because even if Bernie is president, he's only going to be effective as the movement behind him. And otherwise, like, yeah, we have to get out and protest in the streets because a real movement is, you know, it's only going to be effective that way. It's not going to happen just through electoral politics. No. We do need a new party. It's been time. We should have let the Democratic Party die in 2017. We tried. It didn't work. Because nobody who has the political acumen to lead it is willing to lead it. So I don't know how the third party is going to happen. Everybody with the political acumen to say yes to it has said no to it. Um, but it needs to happen somehow. So, yeah. and, and, and as far as like more strategic, like getting involved locally. If you're thinking of running for office, maybe don't do Congress. Do city council. Do mayor. Do something right in your community because we can start turning our communities around. And that's like true institutional change. No, there's a socialist on the Seattle school uh, uh, city council. There's yeah. like, there's people Shama like Zouan, yep. And she's the reason that fight for 15 or one of the reasons mm -hmm. fight for 15 grew as much as it did. Yeah, we need people like that. We need we need uh, serious lefty progressives on your school board. I don't know if they should call themselves socialists, though. I think that was Bernie's mistake right now in this time, day and age. I think if he just would have said. No, I'm not a socialist and not labeled him. So he doesn't need to say I'm a capitalist like Warren does. But if he just said, I'm not a socialist and just continue to say his policies, I may, think may, he could have won over a lot more people. I, I just think I, people I, are really afraid. You know, the whole like, older red groups. scare. I mean, people are really afraid. Older voters are because they grew up with the decades of where they did this um, very effective propaganda of equating, you know, Stalin area totalitarian communism with socialism. And, but I'm hearing that even from younger voters, believe it or not. Well, like the, even they're like, I don't know about socialism. I don't think that's going to work for even though they are totally when you sit there and ask them about all the policies that they want. I mean, it's like completely socialist party policies from Canada or England that are, you know, actually the socialist party. 
And they just people aren't understanding that there are parties in Europe and in Canada that are called that. And it's just completely normal mm -hmm. everywhere else. I like think healthcare. Just, I, I, well, I've heard more people talk about it and openly admit they're socialist ever than I have in my life. So I think that tide is, is turning. Are there plenty of people who are still scared of it? Absolutely. But I think I've never heard people openly say it the way it's being said now. Um, so I think I think you 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 just need you need you need somebody that's you need more people to strong to just more people are saying it. I mean, AOC has said it. More people are just saying I'm I'm a, I'm a socialist. I'm for democratic socialism. And and I think you just need the messaging needs to get even better and be like FDR. No one, no one, none of these Democrats, none of them in this whole primary process have mentioned FDR once. This is what you should be doing. Yes, he was true. he's the That's single greatest victory actually. like the democratic he all these pro, and pointed out you you, you 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 know all these things you like you like you, you know Social Security, that's FDR. You like Medicare, that's FDR. You like a 40-hour work week, that's a union came up with that. You like Saturdays and Sundays off. You like, like, point all of the history of that. Americans' history goes back about nine months at best. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Americans can't remember anything. You have to spell it out for them. And that's like what Bernie did an effective job at. He's mobilized a lot of people. And he's, there's, there's millions of people who jumped into, the, in, into politics in 16 and even more this time mm -hmm. because of this guy so someone mm -hmm. and a group of people need to get together and make this happen and start this third party and go this needs to happen because it's like the environment is, is, is not going to care about your any blue will do they're not going to give a shit about your maga hat or your i'm with her they're not going to care about any of that it, it's not going to care because it's just going to end life on planet earth well it's really going to take a rainbow coalition because it's right. like the reality of the situation is that even though there have been leaps and bounds from 2016 to now uh more so than i've ever seen in my lifetime uh we're still relatively small in numbers. Yeah. You know, I mean, we really are. So it's going to take all of us with some type of common goal. I don't know how to, I don't know how to get all of that together, but I'm hoping that some people do. And mm -hmm. it's not going to be one person. It's going to be a group of people. Yeah, it is. It has to be people with big enough voices, people that, and even then that's, it's really, really tricky. You know, it's tricky to pull off because if all you do is divide the party you're in, then you know, after a couple of losses, people start to fold back into the flock. It will require pulling people out of the Republican side, too. It will it will require pulling those populists out. That's the only way to form that third party, unless we form four parties and the Republican Party splits as well. Um, and then there's, you know, there's there's that system. But you know, I think we could create like a new bull moose. I, I wish that Bernie would also bring up Teddy Roosevelt, not just FDR. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Teddy Roosevelt was a Republican who, you know, this is like a way to appeal to Republicans and to say, well, he was, a, you know, he's like as Republican as like Lincoln was Republican, but whatever, you know, still had the label and say, you know, he was a Republican who believed that the corporations had run off with too much and that he wanted to bring the government back to the common man to the, you know, to the common man to uh, give democracy back into the hands of the people. And he was for conservation policies and um that you know, right his there. foreign policy wasn't so great he was a bit of a, a warmonger but you know we could call it the new bull moose and bring together those republicans and say this is built off of the off of the roosevelt's teddy and fdr yeah and it's a coalition between republicans and democrats because that's the thing too like that term i'm a conservative that means by what you're calling yourself as someone that wants to conserve <laughs> So you should be in favor of conserving natural resources. Yeah, for sure. Land. That should absolutely be, you know, coming from, I'm from Idaho. This is a nature state mm -hmm. and people in Idaho love to do things outdoors. I mean, love camping and fishing mm -hmm. and outdoor sports, skiing and whitewater rafting and hiking, you know, all of that stuff. And so it doesn't, and that's typical of people in more of the um, the non-urban centers of the country. Mm -hmm. You know, typically urban people like to go out and do things like go to clubs and movies and things like that. And then people that are living in the more rural parts of the country like to go and do more outdoorsy things. And yeah, it just, it is mind boggling that they're not the ones who are like, no, we need to preserve all of this. I know. But I think Montana, you know, Steve Bullock, uh, who was running for president for a short minute there, who was the governor, he's the governor of Montana. He actually has... 
Um, he's been able to really build and get a lot of Republicans in his state to support his policies because they ultimately realized, yeah, we are for the environment and we are for things like net neutrality. And we, you know, like Montana Republicans were able to he was he was able to actually figure that out. He'd be a really good person, I think, also for a third, you know, for that to bring in. I think you got to bring in a bunch of different types of people, Tulsi and Steve Bullock. And I think you got to go and get some people on the right. I think you got to get um, I mean, people will, you know, want to kill me for saying this, but like a Steve Bannon. And bring, I know, you know, I know, I know, but you really think he, Steve if, Bannon is the one? Yeah, you know what? If you him. listen to his stuff, you know, I know that there was a. I look like I heard all the smears. I heard what everything, what every, what everybody said about the guy. I've heard all of that. I have not read or watched enough of his stuff to know. But the stuff I have seen that is him talking about the policies and the problems of America, I largely agreed with. When he sat down with Bill Maher, and he was having a conversation with Bill Maher. Many of us sat there thinking, I cannot believe this is happening right now. What world am I living in that I agree more with Steve Bannon than Bill Maher? <laughs> but that's the world we're in now. So run with it. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, I saw that clip as well. And uh, that was the reaction I had, too. So, wow. Did you see that clip? No, I did not see that clip. <laughs> it's I mean, it it's scary. I mean, yeah, you're, you're like, you will watch it and you'll be like, holy cow. Because like, and yeah, and I, I've heard, I, I don't know a ton about Steve Bannon. I haven't seen enough, you know, similar to what you're saying, Kim. But yeah, that, that uh, Bill Maher clip where they're talking about, they were talking about Bernie, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he was saying he liked Bernie because he's a populist and he understands. Mm -hmm. He understands the plight of the average American, the concerns that Americans are having and the and the things, the issues Americans are facing. After that clip, I went and I decided to watch some more of his interviews. And I'd never, you know, before I just heard all the shit about Steve. And I went and I listened to quite a few of his interviews that he'd done in Europe and stuff. And I was really surprised at how much I sat there going, wow, yeah. Hmm. Huh. I had kind of an existential crisis. <laughs> and I'd be like, wait a minute. No, I can't agree with Steve Bannon. I can't. It's, I, like it's amazing because the world. I mean, I think Bill Maher hates getting out lefted, so like they try to make sure he can't. So, so it's like it's got to be hard at this point for his bookers. All right, we got Steve Bannon. We don't have to worry about <laughs> really, really. That just is Ann Coulter still safe? Can we can we book Ann Coulter again? We're gonna book Ann Coulter for the tenth just time this month. Keep her we gotta just it, you know what? It's just a, it's just a two person show now. It's Bill Maher and Ann Coulter done. Uh, That's all right. we can do. And this is what we should be doing. What JFK suggested in 1962. Now, why are we here? What is the issue which divides and arouses so much concern? I will take a uh, case which may be typical, a family which may be found in any part of the United States. The husband has worked hard for his life and he is retired. He might have been a clerk or salesman, or on the road, or worked in a factory, stores, or whatever. He's always wanted to pay his own way. He does not ask anyone to care for him. He wants to care for himself. He has raised his own family. He has educated them. His children are now on their own. He and his wife are drawing Social Security. It may run $75, $100. 125 in the higher brackets, let's say it's 100. And he has a pension from where he worked, the results of years of effort. Now, therefore, his basic needs are taken care of. He owns his house. He has $2,500 or $3,000 in the bank. And then his wife gets sick. And we're all going to be in a hospital, nine out of ten of us, before we finally pass away, and particularly when we're over 65. Now she is sick, not just for a week, but for a long time. First goes the $2,500. That's gone. Next, he mortgages his house, even though he may have some difficulty making the payments out of his Social Security. Then he goes to his children, who themselves are heavily burdened because they're paying for their house, and they're paying for their sicknesses and they want to educate their children, then their savings begin to go. This is not a rare case. I talked to a member of the Congress from my own state a week ago who told me he was going to send his daughter away to school 
but because his father had been sick for two years, he could not do it. And Congressman, I'll pay $22,500 a year. And that's more than most people get. So therefore now, what is he going to do? His savings are gone, his children's savings, they're contributing, they have responsibilities of their own, and he finally goes in and signs a petition saying he's broke and needs assistance. Now what do we say? We say that during his working years, he will contribute to Social Security as he has in the case of his retirement, 12 or $13 a month. When he becomes ill, or she becomes ill over a long period of time, he first pays $90 so that people will not abuse him. But then let's say he has a bill of $1,500. This bill is not that we're talking about Mr. Anderson's bill and Mr. King solved everything. But let's say it's $1,500 of which $1,000 are hospital bills. This bill will pay that $1,000 in hospital bill. And then I believe that he and the effort he makes in his family can meet his other responsibilities. Now that does not seem such an extraordinary piece of legislation 25 years after Franklin Roosevelt passed the Social Security Act. This is not a campaign against doctors because doctors have joined with us. This is a campaign to help people meet their responsibilities. We do not cover doctor's bills here. We do not affect the freedom of choice. You can go to any doctor you want. The doctor and you work out your arrangements with him. We talk about his hospital bills. All these arguments were made against Social Security at the time of Franklin Roosevelt. They're made today. And then other people say, uh, why doesn't the government mind its own business? What is the government's business is the question. This bill serves the public interest. It involves the government because it involves the public welfare. The Constitution of the United States did not make the President or the Congress powerless. It gave them definite responsibilities to advance the general welfare. And that is what we're attempting to do. And then I read that this bill will sack the individual self-reliance of Americans. I can't imagine anything worse or anything better to sap someone's self-reliance than to be sick, alone, broke, or to have saved for a lifetime and put it out in a week, two weeks, a month, two months. This argument that the government should stay out, that it saps our pioneer stock. I used to hear that argument when we were talking about raising the minimum wage to a dollar and a quarter. The fact of the matter is, what saps anyone's self-reliance is working 60 hours at straight time, or working at 85 or 95 or a dollar an hour. In England, the entire cost of medicine for people of all ages, all of it, doctors, the choice of doctors, hospitals, from the time you're born to the time you die, are included in a government program. We are now talking about doing most of the countries of Europe did years ago. The British did it 30 years ago. We are behind every country pretty nearly in Europe in this matter of medical care for our citizens. We are concerned with the progress of this country. And those who say that what we are now talking about spoils our great pioneer heritage should remember that the West was settled with two great actions by the national government. One, in President Lincoln's administration, when he gave a homestead to everyone who went West, and in 1862 he set aside government property to build our land-grant colleges. This cooperation between an alert and progressive citizen and a progressive government is what has made this country great. And we shall continue as long as we have the opportunity to do so. This is the only way we can secure action to keep this country moving ahead. To have places to educate our children. To have decent housing 
to do something about the millions of young children who leave our schools before they graduate. Every day I am reminded of how many things were left undone. Thirty years ago they provided that no drugs be put on the market which were unsafe for hogs and for cattle. We want to take the radical step of doing the same for human beings. Anyone who says that Woodrow Wilson, as great a president as he was, and Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman, that they did it all, and we have nothing left to do, now are wrong. We ask you, the citizens of this country, the responsible and thoughtful doctors, the hospital administrators, all those who face this challenge of educating our children, finding work for our older people, finding security for those who have retired, all who are committed to this great effort of moving this country forward, come and give us your help. JFK said it in 1962. And the one thing he didn't mention in there was dealing with a global pandemic. It wasn't even an issue back then. They weren't even thinking about it. They had dealt with Spanish flu in 1918. But had that been in place, that was 1962. 58 years ago. Thank you for watching the show. America should be that, not Joe Biden's middle ground, not Trump's racist, give all the money to corporations nonsense. We need to be the light that shines throughout the world, not that bombs it, not that steals its resources, not that says racist things because a virus started in China. Oh, no, that. That's the best of America. That's what that is. JFK, not perfect not by any stretch of the imagination, but all of the things he talked about, he gave it in a historical context. All the Ayn Rand, no less government, less government. Now, in the middle of this crisis, we need better government. We need better democratic socialism. Not authoritarian rule, not spending all this money on surveillance, but it's spending money on its people. Because as he said, a progressive informed citizenry makes for a better country. Shave your knuckles for justice. Everybody, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing, many of you, every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.